Hey guys, good morning. Today is what the 17th Monday. Month is going by really fast. We should go a little, a little more faster so I can figure out what the hell is going to happen in August. But, um, yeah, my whole relationship video, thank you for all the comments. Some kind of hurt, some kind of hit me. You know, I understand you guys all mean well. It's really hard because I can't really explain everything, everything in detail in the video because I can only say so much. And it's just really hard to talk about my situation with him, my situation, personal life with my family and stuff. So it's, it's really hard for everyone to, like, know what's really going on. I can understand if my friend treated me like shit, cheated on me, you know verbal abuse hit me, I don't know, stuff like that. I've did assholes before, and he's not like that. Unless he can be, I don't know, but... <sighs> There's nothing I can do if he can't forgive me over what happened, because the thing is... Obviously he has issues, I have issues, and it really sucks when you meet someone really, really good and the person is right in front of your nose and you don't realize it. So I guess it's his loss and me in a relationship or whatever, I always give my all, whether you say it's right or wrong, that you, ne you should never cry over a guy, a guy should never see you weak, you should never chase a guy, but it's just in me, I give my all, whether it's a friend or a guy. It just hurts me more when it's a guy because you're in the relationship. You know what I mean? It's just... I fall easily and that's why I get hurt. Even when it's a friend, I get hurt easily because I give my all and... I don't get treated the same way. And I get hurt. Stuff like that. It's just me. I mean... In time, I will get through it. These feelings will go away. I got through it with my last ex, and he hurt me really bad, and I gave it my all with him. Yeah, the last one's really, really bad. But I have to move on because no one's going to make you happy except for me, and, and that's something that's really, really hard considering the stuff that I have been through, and I'm sure everyone has gone through some traumatizing stuff. And um, some people make it and some people don't. Some people get to the point when they're so alone that they kill themselves. And I have thought about that stuff tons and tons of times when I was going through a deep depression. And I never want to go there again. But when things get this deep, I honestly can say that I do think about it. But I know I will never have the guts to kill myself. That's honest. Because, you know, I talk to God once in a while. I try to make it a habit of talking to him every day. That was my New Year's resolution and I don't. And he knows I mean well because God loves all. I'm not super religious or anything. I figure time will heal and I'll figure out what will happen. Maybe he will change his mind. Maybe he won't when I see him. You know, because deep down honest to God, he has been there for me since I first got to Ohio. It was really, really hard. I was alone. I had no friends. I met people, girls, and they have been flaky and just not there for me and only there when they need something, you know? And I thought I connected with this one girl because she's been through stuff with me and I tried to help her and she met this guy, they're still together, and she just totally ditched me. I'm like, this is not good in my heart. Like, I should not be with a friend who I was there for first, and this guy comes along, and she forgets about her friend. You know, I shut people out quickly these days. And this guy that I'm, like, sad about, he's always been there for me. He knows things that I've been through. And... It's just a nice guy in him. I mean, honest to God, if he was an asshole, let's say like he would have fucked me on the first day he met me, which was like over a year ago, and he didn't. We took our time. We got to know each other. He was being careful. I was being careful. He is 
way older than me, and he, I'm, he has issues too. But of course, a man will admit that, right? But seriously, that's why I figured he must be a nice guy. I mean, I'm nice. I could be a bitch. He's nice. He definitely can be an asshole. Right now, I probably think he's an asshole. But yeah, you guys are like, you're making excuses for him and this and that. Yeah, I do that a lot for people I care about. But it's just my opinion. It's how I feel. And, you know, I got some more comments. You know, I was Googling about depression and how to deal and stuff. I made a comment about how he's been there for me. And now it just sucks and my depression is started. I mean... I was already down right before this whole shit with him happened. Family issues and things my mom said to me that a daughter should not hear. There's a lot of, like, past issues. Since I was born, you know, I think I mentioned stuff that happened to me growing up. But maybe in another video, it's what made me the person that I am today. And the little things that happened to me, like this, or what happened between me and my parents trigger some emotion and all this stuff that happened just kind of all happened at once and I noticed things I shouldn't say to him I shouldn't have maybe it's my tone of voice I mean I've said before I guess this time I just really pushed it I mean it's his fault it's my fault it's so yeah um but I am still focused on trying to lose weight. <sighs> and just trying, you know. Yeah, because I feel like if I don't give my all to a person I care about, whether it's a girl or a guy, then it's not enough. I just... I know I put people first a lot than myself. It's always been like that. <sighs> yeah, this is not good because I try to sleep early and I can't sleep. Um, it's definitely anxiety because my chest hurts. I haven't felt like this in a long time since my last ex. It's been over a year. Oh, my God, how was her, like 2011? May 2011. It was really hard. Just everything you starting your life over, new surroundings, new place, culture shock, being around people, type of people that you're not used to because you kind of grew up in the, like the really nice suburbs and you come to an area where it's like, it's not what you're used to because I don't want to judge. And you know, Ohio's a pretty, uh, from my experience so far, it seems close-minded, you know, like, people are, are definitely racist, a lot of racist here, a lot of talking about colors and hating on Asians and Mexicans, yeah, I have to hear things like that at work, and it, they're joking, but at the same time, it's like, it's really rude, because the 29 years of my life in California, I've never had to deal with any like racial stuff I know I'm all over the place but I'm just letting you guys know the stuff that I go through the stuff that I hear and things like that trigger my emotions that's what I have to deal with almost a daily basis I know people joke around and stuff but sometimes like over and over and over again you can only laugh so much about racial jokes about yourself about other people you know it's like it's not even funny anymore it's getting old so people need to stop it but of course Things are different here. Maybe they think it's okay. But if you were to like make jokes like that in California or where I grew up, that's not cool. I don't know. It's just my opinion. It's really hard. I've been, I grew up in California, been there since I was one until I was 29 years old. And I came here in 2011. But um, I'm still working out. I'm not really taking care of myself as best as I should be because I can't eat, I can't focus, I can't sleep. Work is super duper stressful. But I'm here, I'm still doing what I need to do and cry if I need to. And I know I'm not alone. And if it's meant to be, that's why I remind myself, it's going to hurt because I'm going to expect him to not be here for me. Maybe it's for the best because him and I have been going around in circles trying to be careful with each other. 
you know, we, we've been friends for over a year before we started getting close, getting intimate, you know. So we kind of took our time. That He was the first person that took his time with me. Because in the past, you know, like in relationships, you, you meet someone, you go on dates, you don't get to know each other. Well, in my experience, I just started going on dates and they're my boyfriend. This guy, I became friends first. And he is definitely the f- kind of friend that I had in California. I'm myself, when I'm with him, I can be goofy, I can be a weirdo, I can be clumsy, and it's funny to him, and he teases me. Stuff like that. And when I'm down, like, he's older than me, I'm 30, he's like 44, and yeah, I know, I would never thought I would be attracted to someone who's older than me, or even be with someone that's way older than me, but just something about him. And everyone that doesn't how I say, I'm all over the place, sorry. He's a really nice person, even though he sounds like an asshole right now. Everyone says he has his old soul. He's such a nice guy. He gets hurt. But, you know, he's a guy. He doesn't show up. But people sense it. People that's known him for years and years. He's been in my job for 11 years, but he's not there anymore just because he has a lot of stuff to do at his regular job. He has a real job. But, you know, he's been separated for years and years, and... He has two kids, and he worked his ass off. He'd been through some hell growing up, too. Like I said, who hasn't? But I admired that in him. He worked his ass off, because I know he's not a douchebag or a bum. You know, that was a good thing. But, um... He was that one person I could always go to, and then now I, I don't know what happened. I never thought he would put me through this. So... There's nothing I can do but move on and <sighs> Yeah. Like I'm so empty. I cry because I miss him. I miss the friendship. I miss him checking up on me. Even when I ignore him, he would still text me and now he doesn't and that just means I really, really pushed him away. Someone say, Don't treat him like he's God. He's not God, I know. But it's just, at the moment when things like this happen, it just hurts so bad. And you feel like you can't live without that person. The same way as when you're like married to somebody or you're just broken up with somebody. In my past videos, like trying to love yourself is so hard. I'm still not there. I don't know when I will love myself. You don't need a man to complete you. But at the same time, when you have a family, when you have kids, when you have that one special someone that you can share your whole life with, wake up to, go to sleep with, have dinner with, have deep conversations with, do things together, it's the best feeling in the world. And without it, it's like, you know, you have money, you have a good job, stuff like that, and you're alone. What is the purpose of life? And sometimes I feel like I'm not going to get that chance. So, yeah, and I, I get close to people a lot. And I get hurt when I don't get the same reaction from people. But it's always been in me. I'm always nice to people first. I always give my all to people, and it's the best I can do. I just have to vlog. I came here to drop some stuff at my other office because I'm working at my other office. And no one's there. And the person's always here is usually here in the morning. So I don't know where to stay longer or go. Because my other job is a little bit farther down. And I have things to do. And I'm annoyed right now. So I had to vlog. But really not this like negative ass person. Like I'm a really hyper funny person. People know when I'm in a bad mood. When I'm really quiet. Because that's just in me. Like people love me at work. I'm bubbly. Like every single person says I'm bubbly. I'm just not myself anymore. And the whole working out, it feels good to work out for a couple hours, you know, makes me feel better and not as depressed. But when I, came, when I come back home, it's the same negativity that I have to go through with my parents and I'm in my room. It's just my situation right now in my life is just blah. One day I'll get better. I'm trying to save money, which is hard because I paid hell of shit. When I got here, because of my ex, my past mistakes, it's all done with. So it's like I'm starting fresh at 30, saving money really slowly. 
you know, bought a new car, have a stable job, which I hate. And my dream is to one day buy a house, even if it means being alone. Sometimes it's so better being alone, not having to deal with people, because I loved it. Because when my parents was gone to Cambodia, I was such a happy camper. Yeah, I hope this video also helps people out there that you're definitely not alone. And the way I'm feeling right now, I'm not the only one. Maybe I'm like a Kim Kardashian, except she's hella pretty and lots of guys want her. And she could just be with anyone she wants to. But then again, I'm not in her shoes, so I don't know. So everyone else out there on YouTube don't know exactly what I have been through, even though I have mentioned this and that and assuming this about him and stuff and blah, blah, blah. You know, I respect your opinions too, and I know you guys mean well. You guys are definitely strong, or maybe you're not. <sighs> yeah, so, um, but really thank you. No offense to anybody, because it's the same people that leave me comments because you guys care. It's kind of like my friend, he cares, but then he turned out to be an asshole. See, the thing is, if he hated me so much or mad at me, how could he just go through with going to the show with me in August since we're not talking to each other for two months now? It's been like officially a month. It was the Memorial Weekend in May. That's when we stopped talking because I blew up on him. I didn't mean to. Alcohol. And he's a really, really prior person. He's always been like that. I'm trying to give you details about this person. <laughs> he's really private. He's always been like that because it's just because of shit he's, that's happened to him in the past. Stuff like that. It's hard to explain. You have to like be me or be people that know him to understand where he's coming from. But, um, yeah. Why? Okay, people answer me, me this because I need your opinions. Why would he steal go through to the show with me knowing that things aren't going to be the same with us. The tickets are $230. He could still pick someone else to go and not me. I already paid him. He could just give me money back. But then he would have to face me too. And he knows how much I wanted to go to this show. And a year ago, I first met him. I asked him if he wanted to go. And it was way before we got close or whatever. All we did was watch movies and stuff. And he would tell me, um, uh, sorry, can't. It's things that I do with my kids only. I would and like, oh, okay. And then a while back, I asked him to see Nutcracker. He's like, no, I'm not into that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I kind of gave up asking him stuff like that. So, like, early May, he just asked me to go. Like, do you want to go? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you have no idea. Because I've always wanted to go to a circus. I didn't do stuff like that with my parents growing up. I just didn't. Like, my family and I, I guess old-fashioned Asians don't do stuff like that with each other. I don't know. It was weird. And then I just never had a chance to go to circus when I got older. And, you know, kids had friends. Kids had friends. Friends had kids. We had lives, things to do. Just busy. So, you know, I would, like, go clubbing, the usual. Not crazy clubbing, like, once in a blue moon. Go to coffee shops. Go to the mall with friends. Go to the beach. Go to the park. Work out. Read. Stuff like that. Nothing ever stupid in my life except for making mistakes with the wrong people. I'm a good kid. But, um, yeah, tell me, why would he still go to the show with me? He could just mail me the damn money, or he just give me the money, and then we move on in separate ways. Right? So that's why it makes me think, deep down inside, he does feel bad for me, he does care for me, and I, I don't think he could live with the guilt of not letting me go to the show. And also due to the fact that a while back... I told him I'm letting him go and moving on, blah, blah, blah. And we were talking about us and stuff. Maybe we should stop hanging out. We're getting too close before someone gets hurt and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, okay, we'll stop hanging out. We'll stop talking. He's like, I don't want that either. I'm like, what do you fucking want? But back then he was more, it, was, it wasn't it was as bad as this, so I don't know. So, like, someone's here, so I have to, like, stop my um, vlogging. Sorry this is long, but answer me, blah, blah. Bye, guys.